Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Burn Bootcamp podcast. Uh, I'm your co-host. My name is Devin Klein. I'm the visionary of Burn Bootcamp and co-founder with my wife, Morgan Klein, and uh, co-host. So listen, Ask Devin Anything happens every Thursday, and we scrape the internet for your questions, what you want to hear from me as the visionary. And uh, we, we, I had my team bucket this today into, because there's a lot of questions that, that come in the different platforms. I mean, we're constantly everywhere. So whether I'm like LinkedIn or YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or wherever you dwell, uh, you're going to have an opportunity to connect with myself, connect with Burn Bootcamp, and, and drop your questions. And we're just kind of always banking them, all right? So we, uh, I had my team bank them into two uh, categories, all right? So this podcast and the next podcast uh, will be, uh, that banking of those questions. This first one is all about leadership, okay? And the next one will be all about fitness next week, okay? So make sure that you tune in. In the previous episodes, every Thursday, we're rocking and rolling, y'all. Uh, you know, we're over, well over 100 episodes now, so get your binge on with something positive and optimistic rather than sitting around and binge watching Netflix all the time. Not saying that you shouldn't still do that every once in a while. I personally don't go eight hours anymore like I used to. I got kids and, and you know, I tend to I tend to uh to not watch as much TV as I used to for sure. Alright, so let's get into it. It's leadership. All right. The first question uh that we pulled, and this is just a great question because it's just so generic and they said what does a leader mean to you? Uh so a leader to me is somebody that first takes responsibility for their own life and uses that as a catapult to take responsibility for other people's lives. Whether that be their family, their department, their business, their community, their region, their state, their country. Uh, what I do know is that the biggest leadership is one of the most scarce resources that we have. If you just look around and you see the leaders of each vertical today in our world, I think you and I would both agree that there is a lot of room at the top for somebody who first takes responsibility for themselves. So let's break that down. What does that mean to take responsibility for yourself? Well, I think it means that there's that the truth, that the truth is something that we hold at the highest value. Uh, that seeking the truth, not your truth necessarily, because your truth and the truth are the same. You could think about, hey, the truth being like the reality and your current truth being maybe what we would call actuality. Like this is actually how I feel. This is actually how uh, I perceive the world in this moment. But is that is that, is that reality? And so I think most of us live in our truths and we don't live in the truth. I think we're the, the antithesis of taking responsibility is vowing to seek the truth despite your truth. Because your truth isn't always serving you. It's not always empowering to you. Only you can really take a self audit and say, hey, what, am I living in reality? Like what is, what is real? What is factual? Or am I living in what is my world? What is my feelings? And there's two completely different perspectives. And so I think, what does a leader mean to me? It's somebody, it's somebody that seeks the truth, takes responsibility for their lives, actively, uh, if not telling the truth, at least tries not to lie. Right? I'm not saying that we know everything so that we can be all well, all, all knowing and, and know the truth. But yeah, that's the foundation. And then on top of that, it's okay, now I, I've, I, I've taken responsibility for my own life. Okay, so I've had this experience. I know what it takes. I know how difficult it can be. I know how hard it is to look at yourself in the mirror and say, hey, here is the truth and here's your truth and here's where your gaps are from, from where you're at to where you want to be. And now the only person that can do something about that is you, right? So being able to experience that inner dialogue that, that between the ego and the self and, or you in the mirror, however you want to look at it, and being able to overcome yourself. Like that's what people mean when they say, hey, overcome yourself. It's really overcoming your ego and 
uh, getting yourself in a position where you're, you're seeking the truth and that's your highest value and doing that so hard. And once you learn how to do that, now you have this obligation to give back to your community and to give back to your family or whatever group of people that you're leading. So lead yourself and then lead others. The most important leadership words that were ever said is watch what I do before you listen to what I say. So people are going to see what you do as a leader and they're going to infer you as a leader rather than saying, uh, you know, hey, you're a leader because you were appointed some title or you were appointed some position or you are, you are anointed a leader, therefore I will follow you. Um, we're going to get into, uh, I think throughout this, the five levels of leadership through by John C. Maxwell. And it's really interesting how you think about it, how, how, how he thinks about leadership in the hierarchy and the first, like, let me go through the five levels. So the first one is position. Okay. You have position first. Okay. The second one uh, is permission. All right. The third one is production. The fourth one is people development. And the fifth one is pinnacle. And so as you go through each one of these layers, uh, you are going up the leadership hierarchy where most people think leadership begins uh, or it ends rather is when I get the position. Hey, I've been working so hard to get this position and I finally got it. And now I'm a leader. It's like, if that's your mentality, you're going to, you're going to struggle, right? Cause you have to lead yourself to get in a position of leadership. But once you're in that position of leadership, that level one, that's like your trial and error. When you get the title, now you're just trying to be a leader. You're, you're, you're it's trial and error against, um, against you trying to lead other people and do it the right way. People will give you their minimum amount of effort at this level to give you the minimum amount of uh, re required discipline, effort, energy, because you're just, you just have a title. You have a title. It doesn't mean that much to them. Level two is permission. Now you're a person with a title that people actually are, that people actually enjoy being around. Right? You're not quite, they're not quite learning from you yet. You haven't, you're not to level four where there's people development, but you're at this permission level where people start to like you. They want to be led by you. There's a desire for them to be led by you, right? And then you go to level three where people like you, you got the position and now you start to produce the results for the business, for the organization, for your family, whatever the results are. All right. And then level four is now you start to teach other people how to get those same results, you're developing people. This level's people development in level four. And then level five is the pinnacle. This is where you have respect. This is where you've developed people so much that it's just you are the embodiment of what leadership is. And if you're listening to this podcast, then I know you're striving for level five, that pinnacle level of leadership. You are the embodiment of what it means to be a leader. When you walk in the room, people automatically respect you. They feel your energy when you walk in the room. You have a presence a positive presence. People want to be around you. They want, you know, that you've already gotten their permission. They already like you, right? You obviously hold the title and the position already. You get their permission. They start to like you. You're producing results at a really high level. People want to emulate that. They want to produce results too. Then you show them how and you show enough people how that you're just getting mad respect from everybody when you walk in because you've added so much value to their lives. So this is the general trajectory or how would you say st uh, stair, uh, stair step uh, uh, hierarchy to how you go from getting a position to actually being somebody that is a leader. So loaded answer to uh, the question, what does leadership mean to you? But that's a little bit of elaboration on it. Okay. So number two, uh, let's see, they asked, what is your leadership style? All right. So what is my leadership style? Well, so to be a pinnacle five, level five leader, to have a leadership style that's respected, there's two things that have to happen. We talked about it's seeking the truth and then it's, and then it's um, uh, helping other people find their dreams, find their goals, find their vision, plant their stake in the ground, have confidence in the, the act of standing on their dreams and their goals and proudly with a with a, with a chin held high and, and being able to say, hey, here's who I am, here's what I came to do, and I know that I have love and, and I have support around me. And so in order to develop 
level five pinnacle leaders, which is always the goal of a level five pinnacle leader is to develop other level fives. My leadership style is to the truth very fast. So out of love for you, out of love for whoever I'm working with, I take responsibility, whether they'd like me to or not, as their mentor until they tell me not to. And if they exude a behavior that I believe to be incongruent with what it takes to be a level five leader, boom, I tell them right away. And we have a, a conversation that's coded in love where it's like, hey, listen, I love you too much to let you have that interaction inside of a meeting like that and throw your fellow team member under the bus in front of other people by disagreeing with them in public when you should be disagreeing with them in private. Is that a fair critique of you? And do you know and understand that I'm coming at this out of love, but I also have to rush to the conflict and ensure that you know within, we have a 24 hour rule that you know within 24 hours, right? My rule is more like 24 seconds or 24 minutes but at least at 24 hours or as fast as you possibly can, you take the position of mentorship. You don't wait for it. Okay, You take it. You don't wait for it. And the interesting thing about taking it is you have to climb the levels first. You got to climb the levels to get to that respect level, to get to that pinnacle level, or even the people development level where you're starting to build that respect and you, you're, you're getting it. It's just not universal yet. Um, and maybe your team just might be smaller, but you know, even I would argue in the results level, you really start this, right? You really start this process of, of rushing to conflict using tough love in a sense of, hey, I love you so much that I have to tell you this tough thing. And that is my leadership style because I want everyone to know what they, where they stand with me at all times. Um, I'm certainly 1000% comfortable in potentially being offensive to somebody in seeking the truth. I try not to be offensive, but I don't worry. I, don't, I, I value truth over somebody's subjective defensive mentality um, or, or my subjective offensive mentality. I, I try not to be offensive, don't get me wrong, but I will rush to conflict and I will think about how, uh, you know, and as I play that conversation back, to use the example, somebody has a disagreement, throws their fellow team member under the bus, disagrees with them in public. They should be disagreeing with them in private. We step out of the office uh, at the end of all of our meetings. It's two claps on two, right? Two claps on two, one, two. It's like we do at all of our camps. I'll pull somebody outside of the office for, you know, as fast as I possibly can. And, uh, you know, I'll run a feedback loop with them. And feedback loop, there's podcasts on that. You can listen to, uh, there's two or three or four of them. I won't cover that here, but that feedback loop basically ends with like, hey, tell me what you tell me what we just talked about and what you took away from what I said so that I know that when we get into that meeting next time that you're going to be able to uh, fix that behavior. And, and, and so they repeat back to you what you told them. So if I say, hey, it's better to disagree with somebody in private than it is in public because you undermine you undermine um, your relationship and you undermine the trust between you two. And when you undermine the trust, especially with you two, it undermines the trust of the entire organization and our organization is built on trust. And if that, and it's finite and you can lose it in just two seconds if, if you don't really adore it. So, so, so disagree in private, okay, not in public. So tell me what you heard that, you'll, that you think is valuable that you'll take away with you next time. And somebody may say like, something that you didn't even say. They might have, they might have uh, their perspective might have been, you know, hey, whisper it to them in the middle of the meeting or something like that. It's like, no, 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 right? So you want to make sure that that person that you're giving feedback to repeats it back to you so that A, they take ownership of it and B, that you have some place in the future to meet next time in the meeting where you can analyze it. And then you have an opportunity, guys, to have a high five with that person right? To, to give positive reinforcement to that person that you're trying to lead. Whether that be kids at home, people in the office, it doesn't matter. Humans leading other humans is just natural. And so uh, my, my leadership style is tough love, but real tough love, like, like deep, deep love in such a overwhelming sense that it's 10 uh, emotional uh, uh, deposits into your bank account versus one critique or withdraw from that emotional bank account, right? So if I'm putting, if I'm giving praise 10 times over 
because of the behaviors that I see as a mentor that I want to reinforce, then I, ha I have to do that in order for me to ha even have the mentality of tough love in the first place. Because tough and love, it needs to be, it needs to be for every one tough, there's, there's 10 or 9 pieces of love. All right? So that's a good ratio to go by. That's my style. All right. Question number three. How can someone become a better leader? Okay, so how can someone become a better leader? There's not that many ways. Like, so that, that's, that's a good thing, right? That you don't have like an infinite amount of quantum possibilities in the field to pull from. <laughs> like you have a few personal, personal characteristics that you would have to build in order to be somebody that people don't just have to follow because you're level one and you have a position, but they want to follow because you're level two and you have the position and they want to follow you and they buy into your message. They vibe with you, right? You are their leader. You are their person. And together you guys uh, go get results. And so how can someone be a better, better leader? Align clearly and early, right? Set, set the expectations of the, uh, what we just talked about that, Hey, when somebody gets hired or, you know, you bring someone on to the volunteer group for the first time, you would want to tell them, Hey, here's a little bit about the culture here. And we, uh, are results oriented, right? We, I would relate to people, my core values. We are results oriented, but we're always going to put the well-being of people and, uh, first over, over our results, but we are going to be results oriented and doing so we're not going to change up who we are. We're authentic, right? And when we say we're going to do something, we actually are going to go out and do it. That's integrity. And I want you to know at some point down the line, we're going to do a lot of great work and we're going to take this thing to the moon and we're going to, you know, build an empire, right? Or we're going to build a, the greatest thing anybody's ever seen. But there are going to be hard conversations that you and I are going to have to have along this journey. And I just want you to know that now so that when we get to the hard conversation, I can say, hey, remember when we said we we're going to have hard conversations? This is one of those things. And um, I hope that I've given you enough love uh, and, and positive uh, emotional deposits into your bank account that I can have a withdrawal right now and that I can really talk to you about something that is, um, that's, that's bothering me, that's bugging me, that really violates the needs that I have. And I, I want you to know the needs that I have. And, and I want to make sure that I understand, you know, what needs that you have that are not being met. And so that conversation aligning clearly and early is step number one. If you're going to become a better leader is, is to, is to do that, right? Have that, have that kind of, uh, communication where you're jump starting the relationship and setting expectations and then hold what we call the meeting pulse. Meet with them every single week, every single quarter. All right. And every single quarter when you're meeting with your team or you're meeting with your volunteers, you're going to say, what's working? What's not working? How can I better serve you? Okay. What am I missing? How can, what tools and resources and knowledge and transparency do you need that you don't have? These uh, questions, right, are really the foundation of becoming a better leader. Morgan and I also did a podcast, a Coffee with the Kleins, a few weeks back, and we talked about the we talked about some questions from a book by uh, again John C. Maxwell. It's one of one of the you know experts in leadership. Somebody mm -hmm. I learned like I, my first three leadership books were all John C. books, and so uh, the what would you say? So the so the uh, the book. Good leaders ask great questions is the answer to how can someone be a better leader? It's like you ask better questions. Got it? Got to ask better questions. You ask better questions and you'll get better answers. And it's not that you're trying to solve problems and then you'll never have problems ever again. Your goal is to just get better quality problems over time. The problems that we experience today in the Burn Bootcamp or organization are much better quality problems than we had to uh, than we had when we were just getting started as a startup. The problems when you're a startup are like, hey, are we going to be able to make payroll next quarter? Are we going to be able to open this gym on time? Right now, it's like, hey, we need national brand awareness partners to get to the tipping point of 
you know, global and national brand awareness. Still a problem, much different quality of a problem from there to here. So as long as you're asking better questions, you're gonna get better answers. When you get better answers, you're gonna solve problems. When you solve problems, you're going to create new, more higher quality problems. And that's when you can start to get results and get to level three. And then the more people that you're bringing on and starting to develop and the more responsibility in terms of how large the problems are that you're solving, then you're going to start to develop people, okay? And so we're talking about being a leader, how do I become a better leader? It's like, ask better questions. You'll get to the point where you're getting people to produce, people start to produce, they start to emulate you and your network and your influence grows. Remember, leadership is just influence and you're trying to influence people uh, to, to reach the company's goals through their own goals. That's very important, not the other way around. Okay, not the other way around. It's not like, hey, we're gonna build the best thing ever and we're gonna employ your resources to help us. You would be really useful to us, right? Not that mentality. That's, to me, that's a backwards mentality, although it's been the way most of industry has worked for a very long time. To me, it's the complete opposite way. We need to understand the visions and the motivations, the push and the pull visions and motivations of the people that we are responsible for leading and we need to motivate them through their lens and show them how, hey, through your vision and through your lens and through your goals, if you can help the company do this and this and this and this, that's going to get you exponentially closer to where you want to go. So we flip it. That's called people first. That's our core value here at Burn Bootcamp, right? And then leadership is all about our second core value, pride and results. Walking up that level one to level five, all right? Okay, so what is an attribute you see in someone that makes them a tier one leader, whatever that is? So, okay, so I, I, I'm assuming this question is like, hey, what are, the, what are the attributes, what are the characteristics of people that are leading at the highest level, okay? I think the number one attribute that you're going to see at somebody leading at the highest level is they are always putting, they're always putting the well-being and the needs of people that they're responsible for ahead of not only their own, but ahead of the companies. We just talked about that a little bit, but that's, that's number one. Like, it's like ahead of even their own desires, goals, well-being, you're going to prioritize, okay, you're gonna prioritize other people and you're gonna make sure that other people are your responsibility. You take it upon yourself to be an educator, a mentor. You don't wait for anybody else's permission. You just start doing those things. And I think that's one attribute. Another attribute is integrity. Your reputation is everything. It takes 20 years to build it and it takes 20 seconds to completely ruin it. And you can see this, the more, the higher you go up this leadership hierarchy, the more influence you have, that means the more people are following your word and your message. You have a massive amount of people. You do, you can see this happen in contemporary, like you do one thing wrong, one thing, boom, you are done. So you must guard your reputation, your integrity, your word, with everything because if you get a reputation for saying something and then not doing it because whatever reason, maybe you don't feel like it, right? Well, guess what? Your reputation is built on your trust with other people. Your trust with other people is built on integrity, doing what you say you're gonna do when you say you're gonna do it regardless of whether you feel like it or not. And you see people that, that lead at the highest level that are widely regarded and, and highly respected. And, and you see people that pretend to be leaders at, that maybe be highly regarded and widely respected, but you know they um, are polarizing, right? That's a characteristic a level five leader does not have. They're not polarizing figures. They, they, they don't they might make some people uncomfortable with the pressure that they would put on them with their standards, 
but they're not attacking anyone ever or gossiping or talking about other people. They're talking about ideas. They're talking about visions. They're talking about growth. It's a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. These are some traits of a leader at the highest level. One of my favorite books by Carol Dweck is Growth Mindset, or it's called actually Mindset. And it talks about the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. And so you have all these things start to come together at the highest level. And now all of a sudden you're, you're, you're talking about how well-rounded an individual needs to be in order to have the characteristics necessary. Or, or, or another way to put it is, who do you have to become to get what you want? Because you're not just going to be able to snap your fingers and get what you want. It doesn't work like that. Okay, we have to be really clear on, on, on what we want. And then we have to be really clear on who we are. And then we have to be really clear on wh who we need to become from where we are now to where we want to go. And, that's, and I call that the, the, the great gap, you know, the, the, the big divide. And, if pe and this is where most people just like, they're, they're on the mountain peak and they just look down at that big divide, that, that canyon, and they see this like kind of tightrope going from one peak to the other. And they see what it would be like to just, how, how scary it is to just go discover those gaps, right? It's like as you're walking across this tightrope and the wind blows a little bit, whoa, and you kind of stop and you hold. And it's like, I don't want to take a step further because that, the gap, the divide is too scary. But what, but how empowering is it when you actually get on the other side of that, right? And you get to the next mountain peak and you have identified these gaps and, and, and now you're, you're empowered with the information that you have to get you from level two to level three or level three to level four or, or level four to level five. And when you get to level five, now it's like you, you continue that process over and over. Continue to set a new goal and walk across that tightrope. So yeah, the last answer to that question, what attribute? It's like somebody that doesn't fear the tightrope. You know, somebody that doesn't fear the mirror. They don't, they're not scared to look into the mirror and say, yup, I know me. And I'm definitely, I have a gap here in this character and I have a gap here in this ability to execute. I got to go fix those. And that's on me and I'll take personal responsibility to do that. You see great leaders acting with that type of attitude. Okay, uh, last uh, two questions here. You are a mentor to many, so who is your mentor? That's a great question. You're a mentor to many, who is your mentor? Well, my mind goes, Initially, and I'm not asked this too often. I probably should think about this question more. Well, the, here's the truth. Here's the reality to this question is that in the environment that I grew up in, as a young man, as a boy, you look to the men in your life. You look to your dad, your uncles, the next door neighbor, the, the, the men in your life that are in your environment. You look to them for values. You look to them to lead you down a path to success, to 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 download the decades of information that they have and, and pass it on to you. And, and so I never had that growing up, you know, my dad being, um, you know, addicted to drugs and alcohol and, you know, in and out of marriages and prison and jail and in and out of criminal charges. I mean, it's just, it was a crazy wild ride. Like my exposure was my dad in jail. My uncles all went to jail at some point, like, you know, it's, it's, it was a, an environment where every male that I was surrounded by, although I looked up to them until I was old enough to realize that maybe I shouldn't, um, I could never really say that I had like this affinity toward, toward any male figure in my life. There was always this, and I still have this today, like this deep level of intuition that when I feel something, there's this like, there's this really deep, um, light bulb that goes off and it goes off really bright inside of my head. And it's like, ding, that's not right. And I've learned to listen to that over time. And I think that was developed by looking at like probably having some like intuition based on the compounded experience of all human beings up until the 1987 when I was born and having that kind of wiring built into the central nervous system to be able to say, hey, like, you know, leading a good life kind of means these certain things and then observing what was going on and saying like, uh, it doesn't feel right. Like that's not what I should be doing necessarily. And so I'd never followed anybody. I found a Tony Robbins CD when I was a young kid. And I remember listening to it in my Walkman, mostly like to and from school. I don't really remember how long it, of a period of time it was. It felt like maybe a few months or so. Um, and that I remember being like the first aha moment where, when I heard uh, the quote, when there are no resources, get resourceful by 
Tony Robbins. And I was like, what he's basically saying is that, hey, when you don't have any, when, when, you, when you have no chance, right? When there's, everything is against you, what you still have is, is yourself. What you still have is uh, your ingenuity. What you still have is your ability to overcome and, and learn and grow and get resourceful and create resources out of nothing. Um, you know, use your disadvantages as your advantages. And so, you know, going on and, and playing baseball, I had some coaches that I thought uh, were stand-up individuals that, but I can never really say that anyone took, you know, grabbed me and mentored me. I probably didn't even learn the word mentor until my college roommate, I love you to death, Dale, he had to get a, he had to get a, a math mentor <laughs> on our freshman year. And that's the first time I was like, somebody's there for you. Like, it's like, Dale, you got a person that was just like taking care of this for you? Like, man, they must, he was a prospect too, right? So like, they're giving him extra help. And, you know, he was like, basically Mr. Baseball coming out of Michigan. And so like, you have this person that follows him around and helps him with all these things and make sure he's staying on his stuff. And Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And so that's like a mentor to me is somebody that is there for you, looking out for your blind spots, doesn't answer the questions for you, doesn't take the test for you, but is there to help you and educate you and you, when you need me, call me, no matter where you are type mentality. Uh, and so I became my own mentor. And then I, and then I was like, that's a bad philosophy, right? Meaning I became my own mentor, meaning that I would read books and watch YouTube videos and consume material, not for entertainment. I've never consumed in material for entertainment. Like I watch movies, don't get me wrong, and you know, I'll watch things, don't get me wrong, but like on a regular cadence, on a regular basis, my one to two hours a day that I spend on, on extracurricular outside of my family and my, and my business is personal development time, and I can't interrupt that with things that aren't developing me personally. Like you can use a screen for good or for evil. Like, I mean, I use a screen to help me learn finance because I'm weak in finance. I need to be, this was, I was weak in finance five years ago. I'm pretty strong now because I've been studying it every single day for an hour a day. And if you do that for five years, one hour a day, same subject, you're going to be an expert in five years, hands down. So like my question for y'all is like, what is that one thing that in five years would be so cool or so dope if you mastered and you knew it could add value to your life and people's life around you? What is that one thing in five years that you would need to start learning now every day, one hour a day for five straight years, knowing that if you did that and you were committed to it and that you substituted your Netflix out for YouTube audiobook summaries or opening up a book and reading it, the old classical way of downloading information, what would happen to your life if the one skill that you knew you had inadequacies at, you could master by taking just one hour a day, right? So through that process, that's my definition of being my own mentor. It's kind of like lifestyle university, right? I'm just going to university full time and I'm taking two hour courses every single day and I've guys skilled up my knowledge like incredibly I, I we don't have any companies uh in this in our company like it's just morgan and i and our team and there's no outside growth capital or smart money or anything like that that is giving us this knowledge like i've had people help me don't get me wrong but i've had to ask the questions nobody's there saying hey devin i'm gonna take you under my wing let's do this sometimes you're the only one that's going to encourage you you're the only one that's going to believe in you you can't rely on other people to believe in you. You can't rely on people to encourage you or to give you that boost that you need. Sometimes you've got to be your own boost, you know, and be okay with that. And the prerequisite to that is you got to think you're awesome, right? You have to, you have to believe in yourself. You have to have a self-esteem. It doesn't have to be incredibly high, but you have to have one, right? And believe that you're actually somebody worthy of speaking highly about before other people will think you're worthy of speaking highly about you. Okay, you follow me? So that's what it means to be your mentor. And then you do that over and over and over and over. And now I feel like everyone's my mentor, that I get to learn from everyone. I've, I've, I've created this state inside of my body that is just a part of who I am. That's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm LOL. That's what we call it, LOL. It's like I'm listening, okay, I'm observing and I'm learning. Listening, observing, learning. This cycle over and over. I'm keeping both ears open at all times. I'm hearing, I'm seeing, I'm, 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 I'm watching, 
I know where my people are. I know where our business is at. I don't get too high in the stars without remembering how to play in the sand. Constantly in the sand, building sand castles. I'll build the, the castle and then I'll have somebody else maintain it. And then I'll get back in the stars and I'll, and I'll look from the stars and I'll say, you guys, we good? Are we good? All right, let's, let's, go, a little, let's go a little bit higher. When you start to do that and you learn from everybody, now I have a network of CEOs, a network of visionaries, people that I can lean on. We, we have a two-way mentorship. Morgan has a business coach, a direct mentor. That's somebody that's there to uh, uh, specifically hire to help her and us and the organization uh, move forward, okay? And so who is my mentor? Everybody. Everybody is my mentor. I learn from everybody all the time. And... You know what I am seeking? There's a gap. There's a gap. And one of the gaps from where I am to where I want to go is I need to network with people, two people that have been there, done that, the things that I want to do, the places that I want to go take this company, take my life, take my legacy. I want to make sure that there are two people in my life that A, number one, have the same core values as I do, and number two, have experienced success that I could only dream of and kept their family and people first, front of mind the whole time, and I, need, and, and I want to learn from them. So that's a, we're talk, talking about the tightrope again, right? That's a scary journey for me because you know what I have to do in order to go seek those relationships? I have to, in essence, Submit the fact that as good as you want to think that you're doing and as good as you want to think that you are at this so far, there's a huge humble bomb that comes on top of you when you look out there and you're like, I have to go face somebody else who has done this a hundred times or you know, greater or, or, or 10 orders of magnitude greater than I have. And I have to first succumb to my inadequacies before I'm open and available to learning from somebody else. And that's why I think actually having a personal mentor is really important. It's easy to sit behind a computer and behind books and to learn without anybody else judging you right? And I don't mean in a negative way. I mean in a, uh, maybe observing you in a positive way, making, making objective judgments based on observation to say, hey, you know, you haven't gotten this part right yet. And then you having to be like, oh my gosh, I've been trying to get this part right for so long. I haven't made any progress on it. You know, that's like humble pie that you have to swallow. And it's a healthy dose. And so when I talk about the tightrope, there are fears that stop you from crossing it, but that fear to me is just one that's an obvious human psychological uh, uh, innate disposition that I would have and that we all have, and that's why you call it the tightrope because you look down and it's really, really scary when you look at what you have to face in order to keep walking forward. So that is the podcast for today. Guys, thank you for all of your questions. We were able to actually bucket a whole list of questions just into the leadership category. And we're doing the same next week with fitness. And so I'm excited to be here with you guys every Thursday. Ask Devin anything. Drop your questions anywhere on the internet. Hey, leave a review on Apple Podcast. I just, you know, sometimes, well, not sometimes, I go off the top pretty much on all of these and I just like to speak from the heart and, and kind of what comes to me seems seems genuine to me it seems authentic rather than trying to script it out and write it out and make videos and all that so with that being said you know sometimes I'll tend to go off on a tangent and not complete a point or I'm getting better I'm trying we're all growing here but I, I hope that you enjoy these segments ask them anything if you have uh, positive feedback please leave it uh, negative feedback don't leave it on Apple Music or don't leave it on Apple Podcast. Just DM me directly. We'll talk about it, right? Because we need the 5.0 rating, all right? That's, that's really important to me. It's a 4.9 right now. I mean, oh, we got to get that to 5. I need 10 of you right now. Go out there, write uh, Apple Podcast uh, review, 
Make sure you flex on that subscribe button. Run YouTube visually and run all your podcast platforms audibly, taking you outside the four walls for more than a gym. Two claps on people.